So uh, there's a little history here. Uh, there's a garden court tradition uh, that uh, on some significant occasion, uh, a member of chambers uh, be designated uh, as the bard or poet uh, and to produce a poem uh, which uh, fits in uh, with the occasion. Uh, and uh, the first bard was Nick Blake, uh, now Sir Nicholas Blake QC, retired High Court judge. Uh, and when he left, uh, the mantle uh, fell on me. Uh, and it's not out of kilter uh, with uh, the uh, topic uh, of this afternoon. First of all, there's the convention. Uh, and then, as uh, we've learned uh, earlier, uh, Poetry, uh, folk song and storytelling is part of the gypsy uh, tradition. Uh, and Ely Frankham uh, was an example uh, of that. Now, usually uh, what I do uh, is that I find a poem uh, by some established poet uh, and uh, I do an adaptation or pastiche of it uh, for a presentation. Um, now, uh, we know uh, that the ECHR grew out of the series of treaties uh, that followed World War II. Um, now, uh, I would like to tell you uh, that uh, an international treaty as a subject uh, of a poem does not happen very often. Uh, in fact, uh, the poems that I have been able to find uh, of that kind can be represented by one circle. However, uh, I'm glad to say uh, that I found part of a poem uh, by Wilfred Owen, uh, the First World War uh, poet, uh, which uh, partly fitted uh, into uh, the subject uh, of uh, this evening. Uh, and so with apologies to him uh, and also to William Wordsworth, uh, here is uh, the ECHR, the beginning and the present. It seemed that out of darkness we escaped through granite which titanic wars had groined and came upon a place where nations met and determined that they by law be joined. The basis of this law is reason, and this continent depends upon that law as on the best of friends, which in a world where men attempted still to evil stands guard against worse ill. Can there be those who would prefer to see torture or inhumanity, servitude or slavery, no right to liberty, no fair trial, nor right to respect for home, private life, or family, no freedom of thought, religion, speech, or assembly. I fear that there may well be, and that they are not absent, even in our government. So we must all then vigilant be to preserve these rights for all humanity. End of poem. Over thank to Mark. You. Thank you, David. That was a, a, a fantastic uh, mashup of Wilfred Owen and, and uh, William Wordsworth, uh, if ever I heard one. And, um, and David Watkinson as well. <laughs> David Watkinson thrown in too. And, and, and what I wanted to say on behalf of um, uh, Tessa and indeed all, all my colleagues at Garden Court Chambers that um, you know, it's been a real pleasure to have been a colleague of yours. You have been a, a fantastic advocate for gypsies and travellers and all those others that you've represented over your 40 year career at the bar and that's just 40 years on your shoulders not uh, shared between a number of advocates. And, 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 and involved in cases like Atkinson, Porter Number 1, Cadona, which got a mention, the Olympic site, a compulsory purchase uh, inquiry, and others, many others, and many, many gypsies and travellers uh, have a lot to thank you for, uh, David. Uh, uh, and, um, and we too 
as your colleagues do, because uh, we owe you a debt of gratitude, really, for blazing a trail or clearing a path for us to follow uh, uh, down. And uh, it's been a real honour and privilege. So thank you so much for uh, chairing. Uh, thank you uh, uh, and, and keeping us to uh, a reasonable time and for a fantastic poem.